The fire moved through different areas with very different intensities. This area suffered an almost total loss, as did many parts of nearby Bastrop State Park. It used to be the best place to enjoy the beauty of the Lost Pines, but now it's the best place to see the damage. A bike ride that I took just a month before the fires now looks almost unrecognizable. Approximately 96% of the park was burned, with 50 to 60% of the park suffering heavy to moderate damage. It looks very different today than it did the last time we were here, and nobody is more familiar with the damage the park suffered than regional director and former superintendent Todd McClanahan. We've been struggling with this drought uh, for so long, you know, for going on probably three, four years now, and uh, you know, then back in September when uh, when the fire broke out, uh, you know, we kind of we kind of knew had a nervousness about us, you know, that you know, something something could happen and. And obviously it did, and it was it was devastating uh, for the park and the surrounding area and the community. Yeah, I mean, at that point, what what were you thinking? I mean, really, truly. it was. I mean, seriously, it was when it first happened. It was get the people out of here. I mean, I had park staff here, and 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 they lost their homes, and then they came back, you know, knowing that their home was destroyed, and they came back to help out, and so it was tremendous, you know. You know, it wasn't until about day three or four, you know, and that's when all the emotions start really running through, and you see the the true devastation, you know, and, uh -huh. and that was hard. Okay. I mean, it, it's hard every day I drive through. Um, you know, that's why I try to find something positive each time. And what's good is we have had some rain. You know, seeing the green grass starting to grow and uh, I saw the bracken ferns starting to pop up and we actually found um, loblolly pine seedlings growing, sprouting in the park yesterday. Oh, wow. Um, so wow. this is about a month early. Um, and so that's a positive sign. Sure, sure. So, so what are y'all doing to revegetate? Well, right now, um, it was kind of a two-pronged approach. Erosion control is our number one concern. Yep. Uh, obviously, we got behind the eight ball. That, that rain really, really hurt us. Um, but we've got, you know, hydro mulching uh, taking place right now. And essentially, they're spraying in a slurry of, uh, of uh, seeds. And, uh, and it's like a, a liquid fibrous material. Virtually the entire park was catapulted into an unexpected stage of regeneration, which has everyone wondering what the next generation of visitors will see when they visit Bastrop State Park. Hopefully it'll be green trees and green grass, just not this green. Now, Bastrop State Park is also the headquarters of Texas Parks and Wildlife's Texas Outdoor Family Program, which suffered no small setback. This is Outdoor Education Coordinator Lindsey Davis. So this is, uh, this is the aftermath of the fire. Um, wow. A lot of the different buildings that burned down, we lost. If you're not familiar, Texas Outdoor Family is a program that helps folks learn and experience camping. And then over here, this was actually a shed over here. We didn't have any time to get anything out. And there's still some remnants of some of the camping gear here. If you have ever wondered what fiberglass poles look like after they go through a fire. Wow. I know, isn't that crazy? A um, big pile of them melted down. So there were uh, matching tents that went along with all those. All, of, all gone. Of course, those are all gone. That's part of the pressure washer right there. Actually, oh, okay. oh, that's yeah. an old rubber hose. And these are your, you know, your classic Coleman camping lantern. Sure. And despite losing $20,000 worth of equipment, they only missed one seminar and are slowly getting back on their feet. So there are bright spots amongst the ashes of Bastrop State Park. The golf course is still open, the rangers were able to save every major CCC structure, and many of the trails are now reopened to hiking, which I set out to do with park ranger Reagan Fought. All right, Chet, this is an area that was heavily burned here in the park. Roughly uh, one third of the park was burned to this degree. Wow, would you call this the worst? I mean, totally scorched, total loss? Basically, yeah, this is, uh, most of the trees will not survive. Wow, it, it is dramatically different from every memory I have of the park. It, it is. One of the first things to come back and re-sprout shortly after the fire was the oaks. Uh, we got post oak sprouts coming up and they're very fire tolerant. If we do not manage uh, the landscape and create the right conditions for the pines to reseed, we'll end up with a forest full of oak trees. Oh wow, so this will actually totally change the landscape. Right, so the, the park is taking steps to create the right environment for this uh, reforestation of pine trees to occur. The trail system out here at Bastrop State Park uh, took a heavy toll. Awesome. Behind us is a place where they've started constructing a bridge over this creek. And uh, they're all being built with timber that's harvested as a result of the, the fire. Oh, wow. Um, we're not trying to copy the CCC, but we're trying to uh, complement the rest of the park. Oh, that's, that's great. How long do you think it'll take the forest to catch up? It's, it's hard to say, but I would estimate uh, 60 to 100 years. The devastation is terrible, 
However, hiking through this black forest is breathtaking in its own way. An experience that is not to be missed, and hopefully something that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. However, nowadays, not all the forest is black. Beyond the oak sprouts we've been seeing coming up, there's these beautiful pockets of bracken fern wow. that are just coming up in places that they uh, were not thriving in areas before. And being the treetops are burnt out, they're getting plenty of sunshine now. What kind of wildlife have you seen personally in the park since the burn? Um, deer, deer migrated back into the park fairly quickly. Um, uh -huh. well, birds are back. Um, I've seen a few turtles. Um, one great thing that's going on is, is the, the volunteer opportunities uh, that we're having. Our first phase of that was um, allowing people to help with uh, Houston toad habitat. People would come out and spread mulch that we had chipped from burnt uh, trees here at the park, reusing that mulch, spreading it around ponds and building wind rows. And what this is going to do is provide a habitat for insects uh -huh. that will be a food source for the Houston toads when they come out from their burrow underground. And it's starting to look promising. That's good. And speaking of volunteering, Reagan also happens to be our lead today as we roll up our sleeves and get ready to give back to the park. All right, welcome everybody. I see uh, several familiar faces, so we really appreciate y'all's support. Today we're installing straw logs to help reduce the erosion on this hillside since the trees and roots that used to keep the dirt in place are now gone. It's time to get to work. These straw logs should help keep the hillside from washing downhill so that this ground can someday be a pine forest once again. Today I'm joined by folks from all over Texas. Some have visited the park countless times, others are first timers. But the one factor uniting all of us is that we're here because we care. This actually was my favorite state park. I used to come here as a kid. We had a house fire a couple yeah. years ago and we kind of like lost everything and so many people like pitched in to help us. We just kind of like want to help however we can. I guess you could say our mission. You know, every time they have a volunteer day, if we can around here, we're doing this. Volunteer work is very important stuff. We can't simply assume that someone else is going to do the dirty work for us. The responsibility of helping out rests with all of us. For more information on the places we visited and to plan your next day trip, visit us online at thedaytripper.com. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. See you on the road.